over 60 locations. There's one near you. All right. I am live at Raider Nation Radio, checking in to see who's out there. Classic, you hear me. Check the microphone, get us going. Because if the microphone doesn't rock, this thing don't work. <coughs> Check one, two, three. Or the subs. Yeah, who's going to be the first to check in and say they can hear me? Yeah. Yep. Anybody hear me out there where we're at? Check one, two, three. We're about to start. If you're there, let me know. <clears throat> Usually we uh, get a couple people in here before we start. We'll be talking about some mock drafts today. Got a couple of good guests. If you're in the chat and you can hear me, just give me a thumbs up or say everything sounds okay. You hear that clap? Take a picture with Nelly. That's a promotion. So you got the Caitlin Clark draft. Yep, I also have uh, the Aces first round, uh, first pick. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to say her name. Di Diasha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, Max Crosby, uh, Bernie Williams home run. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, the two interviews. Yep. Yeah, we're here, huh? Thanks. Yeah, hey, thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. See you later. Thank you. Hey, Danny, once we get started, jot me down the two or three Max Crosby, she said. Okay. Once we get going. Out of the gate, everybody. Here we go, live from Raider Nation Radio, 920 a.m. at Lotus Broadcasting, all throughout the Raider Nation as we count down to the NFL draft. JT here, no Bobby today. Danny is in for him, and we got a busy, busy show. We're loaded up with guests the second hour of the show, so if you want to get in, 
Get in now. By this time of the day, you should know what you want to talk about. Jump on in with me. I'll get you on the radio, and we will be ready to roll. As we're just looking at mock drafts, Jordan Schultz, one of the best out there, new NFL insiders. He joins us today as we deliver an NFL draft insider every day or someone associated with the NFL draft. This week, we still have Bucky Brooks, Vinny Bonsignor, Hall of Famer Warren Moon. I mean, we are rolling. So every day, we're living up to the hype of the NFL draft and what the Raiders need to do. There's a new mock draft out led by Peter Schrager. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And I, I've said the same thing here for a couple of weeks. Can you have fun with this? Yeah, you can have fun with this. But what happens is you can't have fun with Raider Nation if you start giving them things they don't want. That's the only difference for me. I mean, do my national shows, live streams, we're doing one right now on YouTube at JT the Brick YT. What happens is Raider fans get really worked up, which I love. I absolutely love it. I'm the gatekeeper of Raider Nation trying to keep out the haters not the haters in the Raider Nation. I'm talking about every team that hates the Raiders and their fans that don't like the silver and black. But you start talking draft or free agency with the Raider fan, and they don't like what you're saying, man, it could get dicey. And I haven't noticed that yet here because I think Raider Nation has done a pretty good job understanding what's at task, what's in front of us here. There is a chance that the Raiders can trade up and give up future drafts to get one special player. There's a chance that could happen. What's the chance? I don't know, 20%. I wouldn't say it's 50%. It's not 80%. If they're able to trade up and, and give up three first-round picks for Jaden Daniels and more, then come back and check me and say, hey, JT, you were wrong, man. There's like an 80% chance because they pulled the trigger and did it. They went balls out and did it. If they do that, that's fantastic. But we're not going to hear that from Tom Telesco. And you notice you don't hear that around a lot of people who know Tom Telesco. And have studied what Tom Telesco does and what he wants to do. Name the person that has gone on any radio show, on any platform, and said, you know, Tom Telesco, formerly of the Chargers, is a riverboat gambler, and he's going to give up his – this is Tom Telesco's draft. The de facto GM. Is he going to give up three years draft just to get one player this year? Probably not. If he did and he was the superstar that we might hope for, I think every Raider fan would go crazy. It would be like New Year's Eve on the Vegas Strip. Fireworks would go off everywhere. I think everybody would get in line. There'd be some fans that said, oh, it's too risky. How could they do that? But overall, I bet you there'd be a lot of Modellos being poured on that day, Thursday, a week from this Thursday, and a lot of fans would be sipping on their favorite cocktail if the Raiders traded up. But if they don't trade up, then they're going to have an opportunity to sit back and take the best available player. And that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to give you that every day. We're just trying to go out there and say, who's the best available player and check off the box on that. And now I'm narrowing the scope. I'm narrowing the scope of who I believe should be the best available player. So that's it. That's all we're doing is here to try to figure that out. Then we're going to get in there a week from Thursday. We'll be on from two to five live. I'll be anchoring the Raiders draft coverage in the building and they'll come up to us, and they'll knock on the door and tell us this is the player. And then we'll get them on the radio, and we'll move on, and we'll stick around. You know what, what's cool about this? We'll stick around in the first round after that 13th pick overall, and we'll wait around to see if they trade back into the first round, which is always something exciting that could happen. That is always something very exciting that could happen along the way. So that's what we're doing today. If you want to get into the show, 702-365-9200. Uh, that's our call-in number from all over the Raider Nation. Like I said, if I don't hear from one human being in New York, one person in the Bay Area, one person in Vegas, I can't say we have Raider Nation. I got to hear from Raider Nation. I can't imagine it's Raider Nation. I'm there at the torch for the pregame show. I'm at every event. I can't make believe there are fans here listening. I got to hear from you. I got to know what you're doing. I got to hear from your voice on what you want to do. So no matter who you are, where you've ever been, Whatever you think your role is in Raider Nation, sound off like you got a pair at 702-365-9200. So Peter Schrager, Olu Fashanu, the offensive linemen. These offensive linemen have tough names, man. All three of them. Olu Fashanu. And I got that from Rich Eisen because I went back to his 40 time and made sure I got that as close as I can 
Peter Schrager picks the Penn State junior offensive tackle available at number 13 overall. Peter, we go back a long way. I think Peter knows the Raiders really well. He's got a lot of sources within the Raiders. And that's who he thinks is going to be available. The Penn State offensive tackle, which I'm good with. I'm actually good with that pick. Peter Schrager went on to write at NFL.com. The Raiders need to build up the offense in the draft. Continuing to fortify the old line makes a lot of sense. Tom Telesco hit on most of his first-round picks as general manager of the Chargers. Now he's looking to do the same with the rival Raiders. Fashanu might have the highest upside of all of these tackle prospects. Ooh, ooh, Peter just gave us a clue. He gave us a clue. He said Tom Telesco hit on most of his first-round picks as the GM for the Chargers. Now he's looking to do the same with the rival Raiders. What does that mean? Let's dissect that. He's been pretty good in the first round. He's not a bold risk taker. He takes the best player available. Maybe Peter Schrager is telling you that's what he's going to do here. He's going to stick to the book of the Tom Telesco book, which is hold your ground. Hold your ground. As Mel Gibson said in Braveheart and Jon Snow said in Game of Thrones, hold the wall. Hold the wall, hold our ground, and we'll fight another day. We'll fight another day if we don't get the quarterback. I mean, what the hell is Gardner Minshew? Yesterday, like he owned the place, which is great. We got him and we got Aiden O'Connor, who they rolled out first yesterday as the players showed up. And they were all, and it was voluntary, and it was a great turnout for the silver and black. So, crucial to get a quarterback. For me, it's important to get Jaden Daniels if you can, because you'll never get him again. You might have to wait five years in free agency, and if he's going to get let go in five years, then it didn't work out well. No one's going to let go of Jaden Daniels in four to five years unless they want him out. Kind of like a Baker Mayfield situation. And we didn't want Baker Mayfield, but I wanted Baker Mayfield. I did. I wanted Baker Mayfield because I was there on that Thursday night in Los Angeles when Baker Mayfield ripped us up from the goal line and won the game. I like Baker Mayfield. We passed on him. We passed on him. So free agency and cornerbacks are good. I didn't want Kirk Cousins. Oh, no way. At this price for Kirk Cousins, this late in his career, kind of wanted to even kick the tires on Aaron Rodgers. You hear what he had to say about COVID and Fauci and all that? Oh, my God, he is off the rails. I'm not talking about his opinion. I'm not here to talk politics. He's just off the rails right now. And then the other free agent quarterbacks with the Raider Nation of like Jared Goff, who's now in Detroit. I don't think he's a good player from Cal. That didn't seem to be part of the program a while ago when he was moved. Matthew Stafford came in. Raider Nation didn't want Deshaun Watson. I would agree to that with his trials and tribulations in Houston. I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo was the first choice, but they wanted to move on. The former regime from Derek Carr and Jimmy Garoppolo made a little bit of sense because of his connection to the former head coach. And now everybody thinks the connection of Jaden Daniels to Antonio Pierce is going to part the Red Sea like Moses, like he's just going to walk through and walk right into Las Vegas and be our star quarterback. It don't work that way unless you give up something. As I often said about the NFL draft, it's like a divorcee on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills after she just divorced her billionaire husband and she got her check and she's going down Rodeo Drive buying dresses, handbags, cars, whatever she wants. That's what some of these teams do. They're out of control. They just want to fill up the shopping cart and get as many players as they can. Now, I think the new model going forward would be the Houston Texans. They got C.J. Stroud instead of Bryce Young. He stabilized the quarterback position as a rookie. They went heavy on defense with an edge rusher. They got good players on both sides of the ball, and they just got Stephon Diggs, which is just like getting Devontae Adams. It is, but they got him for far less, and Devontae Adams is a hell of a player. I'd rather have Devontae than Stephon Diggs, but Houston is closer to a Super Bowl run than the Raiders on paper as of today. So one of the things I've been talking about a little bit as of late is how do the Raiders become Kansas City? We're not going to become Kansas City until we beat them twice and we win the division. It's just not going to happen. But how do the Raiders let a team like Houston get past them or Jacksonville get past them or teams like that? It's because 
you know, when you make a mistake with Damon Arnett and Cleland Farrell and Henry Ruggs, and you make these mistakes year after year, Jonathan Abram, all of these players who were good but didn't stick around, then you go backwards because of the limitations you gave the organization via the draft. I like Dave Ziegler. I thought he was kind of on the right track. I, I liked his philosophy. When I sat down with Dave Ziegler and he gave me his philosophy, pretty good philosophy, what he wanted to do overall was very sound. And it was before. Don't want to spend a lot in free agents. Want to build through the draft. That's what Tom Telesco does. Telesco does that, but Telesco has been doing it longer. And Mark went down that road now because he can't afford to maybe take chances on someone who hasn't done this before. So Tom Telesco comes in with a guy who's been in a war room in the past when there are big decisions about to happen, and he makes a pretty good decision. Pretty good decision. People don't want to give him credit for Justin Herbert. You give the credit to the GM who gets a quarterback. He is one of the more recent GMs in the NFL who got a quarterback. You could say because Miami wanted Tua, say whatever. Justin Herbert fell to him. Whatever you want, he's on the check. Justin Herbert. If we had Justin Herbert in Vegas two, three years ago, we'd be set at quarterback for 15 years. We don't have him. So we're trying to get a quarterback who will let us breathe and will think like we have that quarterback for the next 15 years. But Gardner Minshew walks in with a brand new sweatshirt, little ass boy, right? Then you see, you know, Aiden walks in there with the stash. They're ready to go. They're ready to go. They want to hear about this quarterback talk. They are quarterbacks in this league ready to go to work. And Antonio Pierce likes them both. And we know he likes Jaden Daniels. Peter Schrager in his latest mock draft, which we're going to go over here before we talk to Jordan Schultz, has Caleb Williams going number one to Chicago. Number two, Jaden Daniels to the Commanders. After skipping measurements in Indianapolis, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner pleasantly, pleasantly surprised many folks at LSU's Pro Day by weighing in at a pretty robust 210 pounds. As of today, I have Daniels as the number two pick. I agree with Peter Schrager. At number three, he has New England taking Drake May. How the hell do you pass on Drake May if you're New England? Who's the quarterback for New England? Jacoby Brissett? You got to pass on Drake May? You got Jacoby Brissett? Okay, so he's at three. I agree with that. And at number four, breaking news, Peter Schrager has the New York Giants trading up from six to number four to get J.J. McCarthy. Man, the J.J. McCarthy hype is real, man. It is everywhere. And then, just like I predicted, four quarterbacks taken in the top four. Then the Chargers are on the clock at number five, and they get the best player available in the draft who is not a quarterback because they don't need a quarterback. And who is that? Marvin Harrison Jr. How about that? How the hell is that going to happen to Jim Harbaugh? The guy gets suspended from Michigan, suspended a couple of times, and then all of a sudden he comes into the league. It's Marvin Harrison Jr. Whoa. You know why he's doing that? Because everybody's panicking to go get a quarterback. So Harbaugh goes, I don't need one. Let me stir the pot. Let me get everybody going on the quarterback. Let me tell everybody J.J. McCarthy's the best pro day workout I've ever seen. So Marvin Harrison falls to me. So both I and Peter Schrager agree with that. At number six, because Arizona traded back two slots, they get Roma Dunze, who played at Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas, the powerhouse Bishop Gorman, Roma Dunze, who probably should go there because his grade is a top six guy. Tennessee at number seven takes Joe Alt. Atlanta takes the edge rusher from Alabama, Dallas Turner, who's really good and no one's talking about him. At nine, Indy trades with the Bears to get Malik Neighbors the great wide receiver from LSU and the Jets take Brock Bowers, the tight end junior. How cool is that going to look for what Aaron Rodgers already has? And then to add in Brock Bowers, who's probably on paper better than Michael Mayer at the same age. I'm a big Michael Mayer guy, but Brock Bowers comes in really big. Uh, Peter Schrager has the Vikings holding Pat at 11, taking Terry on Arnold, the Alabama cornerback who's been tied to the Raiders. Denver at 12. Latu, the UCLA edge rusher. And then I said uh, Vegas at 13 gets Fashanu, the tackle from Penn State, who would be a good pick. Fawaga would go next to the Saints. So look, here are the three offensive tackles. There's four that are going to go early. Okay. And we all know who that's going to be. The first tackle 
off the board, no doubt, is going to be Joe Alt from Notre Dame. And then there's going to be three tackles that could go Fashanu out of Penn State, Fuaga out of Oregon State, and J.C. Langtham out of Alabama. Those are the guys that are going to go pretty quickly here because everybody would love an offensive lineman who could start. The cornerbacks that he has going high, uh, Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. Look, taking a corner from Toledo in the first round. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't watch a lot of Toledo football. Tell me how that works out. But he could be a really good player. And then after about pick 20, 21, 22, it's a crapshoot. Uh, Peter Schrager has Bo Nix of Oregon going number 23. And here's the last thing. I saved the best for last, but it might not be the best for some Raider fans. No Michael Penix Jr. Not from Peter Schrager. No Michael Penix Jr. available there at all. So that's where we're at. We are at a specific moment here. We have limited shows before the draft. We're not going to take your calls on draft day on Thursday. For obvious reasons, we'll be anchoring the draft live. Go to the picks Thursday, Friday. So basically, we're a week out. We got today's show on Tuesday to the following Wednesday to go balls out on who the Raiders are going to select with their picks. 702-365-9200. Chris in West Oakland. Ready to roll on the flagship of the silver and black. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, JG. I'm gonna get a, just. I'm gonna call a lot more towards the end of the week and early next week about the draft because I'm gonna take this phone call in a little different direction in a couple of seconds. But I'm just gonna say this. You know, I've been on record about you know I, I love Penix. I, I think he might be the best pure passer. I've seen scouts rate him as maybe the best pure thrower in the draft. I don't get the JJ McCarthy hype. He reminds me a lot of Mac Jones. Okay, talent, nothing special, nothing pops, but played on the best team in college football. I stack him up when I've seen workouts and I've seen just pure throwing ability. I don't think he's anywhere near these other guys. And I know Telesco, uh, you know, likes to take the best player available. I have the same thing with Ziegler. It's easy to go next best player available when you've already back set. If you don't have the quarterback set, that position is so much more important. All due respect to linemen and safeties and wide receivers, it's a lot easier to find one of those guys than a true franchise quarterback. That's why it's all a risk, JT. You don't know if these guys are going to pan out or not. I roster now will never be anything better than average or mediocre. You're going to compete with the Chiefs, so you might as well roll the dice. But that's for another phone call. When I really wanted to talk, and I didn't hear you yesterday, you always let me do this before, and you were great. I wanted to pay a little tribute to the late, great Kenny Holtzman of the Oakland A's. I know you know the name. A lot of people don't. This guy was a stud for the Oakland A's in the early 70s, passed away on Sunday. When I first started going to the games, just like you started going to the games with the Yankees when they were winning World Series, it was easy to get hooked on baseball. This guy was the anchor of the staff right behind Catfish Hunter, right between him and Vita Blue. And, again, his postseason record was phenomenal. He won two game sevens in 72 and 73. He won a game four against Baltimore and Jim Palmer to put the A's in the World Series. And I'm going to leave you with this stat, JT, because it's truly remarkable. In 1973 and 1974, Catfish Hunter, Vita Blue, and Kenny Holtzman were the only pitchers in the previous 100 years before them to win 65 games, throw at least 850 innings with an ERA under three for two consecutive years. It hadn't been done in the 100 years before. It hasn't been done in the 52 years since. So I watched this guy a lot as a kid growing up. He helped me get Kenny Holtzman because I know the scumbags that are running the A's now don't have the decency to even bring this up on the air or release a press statement. I'd like to just shine a little light. Rest in peace, Kenny Holtzman. You are a true legend and only the Oakland A's and the Yankees are the only franchise that JT to ever win three consecutive World Series. And the A's don't win three consecutive World Series without the late, great Kenny Holtzman. Thanks for letting me say that, my friend, and I'll tell you more about the uh, Thanks, Chris. He was a great pitcher. I remember those years and how dominant he was and very clutch. The way Andy Pettit was very clutch for the Yankee dynasty, knowing you throw a pitcher in like that with a couple of other monster names in your pitching rotation and you know when he was going to get you in. Big part to building a dynasty, and the Oakland Athletics had a big, huge dynasty in the 70s. I grew up in that era. You had the A's dynasty, and then you had the Big Red Machine. Oh, Pete Rose's birthday today. 
Pete Rose is 83 years old today, the all-time hit king. One of the biggest breaks in my life. The first guy to give me a break in my career as a radio host. Because I won the Jim Rome smack off. I did that on my own. That was my phone call that won. And getting help from anybody. That was me. But the first guy who got helped me get a radio show was Pete Rose. Because the backstory, if you didn't hear it, I was working at Sports Fan Radio Network doing the midnight to 5 a.m. shift. Let that one sink in. Midnight to 5 a.m. Pacific time, which was a fun shift. And then, I, then they rewarded me with 10. They took an hour away, and I went 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Pacific. And I had nothing to do during the day. I was a former stockbroker, and I kept hammering my boss. And I said, look, I can do that Pete Rose show better than anybody. No one who could do it better than me. He says, I don't have any money to pay you. I go, I don't care. I'll do it for free. Just get me in the door. And Pete Rose agreed to it, and I got my first break with Pete. And then I got paid because Pete said, pay the guy. And we did that show. Did many when he was out in uh, Florida doing that. So Pete Rose, birthday today. Uh, this is not for, if you want to call in on the phones, you can, because Pete lives here. Pete lives here. You can see him and find him in town. I'll just say this again. We are a forgiving country. We are forgiving. Right now, we don't seem to be forgiving a lot of people. But overall, we're a forgiving country. Pete Rose gambled, no doubt about it. He did not gamble as a player. There is no evidence. There is no proof that he gambled as a player. He'd be only going into the Hall of Fame as a baseball player, not a manager. No debate in my mind. He managed. He admitted it. And he managed the Cincinnati Reds, and he gambled while he was managing. I read the Dowd report. I know it all blindfolded. So I've always suggested, put Pete in the penalty box 30, 40 years. They've done that already. Let him out of jail. Induct him into the Baseball Hall of Fame and put on his plaque. Pete Rose, an asterisk, was left out of baseball, kicked out of baseball for X amount of years for gambling on baseball and breaking the rule as the manager, not a player, and put him in as a player and make the Hall of Fame legit and forgive Pete Rose. We know he screwed up. He screwed up with more things in his personal life than just gambling. But he's, he's Pete Rose, and he's paid the price. You might say, no, he doesn't. He sells autographs. That's how he makes money. Can't make money any other way. He's not an accountant. He's not a lawyer. He sells his name. He sells autographs to put food on the table and pay for his family. Pete Rose, happy birthday today. Big impact on my life. And I uh, wanted to mention that as we open it up. 702-365-9200 as we continue on. We got a busy show today. So Jordan Schultz is going to join us a little bit later on. He is very good. He's one of the new insiders that we have out there. Looking forward to that. Mike Davis. The coach of our indoor football team who joins us every two weeks, they're undefeated, and he's going to talk just football too. It's not an indoor football league. We mention it. We talk about it. How's the team doing? And we get there's and other topics that are there. We're excited about that. And then I'm working on something else a little bit later on in the show that hopefully will come through. Uh, Olden Polonese, NBA insider, as the NBA is underway. It's a play-in tournament. So when we come back, Caitlin Clark got – drafted last night. She broke the internet again. Forget about talking about men anymore, but stop. Scotty Scheffler's ratings went down in the Masters. Baseball players get no ratings. None. Hockey players get no television ratings. Caitlin Clark blows everyone away. It's never happened before in our life. It's happening now. How do people not see this as one of the all-time biggest stories in sports? This didn't happen 10 years ago, then 18 years ago, then 35 years ago. It's happening right now for the first time. She's moving the needle, and she moved it in the WNBA draft, uh, going to Indiana. It looks like the Aces did well with their draft picks, getting one of her teammates there. But I just wanted to mention that, and we'll have some sound from what Max Crosby said yesterday. I got one more I want to get in here. Matt in Vegas on 920 here as we open up the first hour of the show. Go ahead, Matt. Good morning, JT. Uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. I've been listening over 20 years. Um I want to balance off what Chris said uh, earlier from Oakland. Um, I kind of have to disagree with the quarterback situation. Uh, I think Garner Minshew can manage us in the playoff game. I think if we just draft a nasty defense like we used to do, how we used to, because that is Raider right way. Absolutely 100%. People f- seem to forget about Trent Dilfer back in 2001 beating us in the playoffs, just being a game manager. I think we can do that. We draft best player, we go cornerback. We get another end in the second or third round, and we just build that depth on that defense. We got Cody Whitehead on the offense who can switch sides. My brother's a Bears fan. He gave me the input on him. 
I think we're developing a system where we can run, manage the ball, and just have our defense just go town. You send that front four and let them eat. We have the nastiest front four this year, and I think we will be a top five defense. We do that. I think we can go at least two games in the playoffs. JT, thank you for your time. Have a great day. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the philosophy that I opened up the show with as we wrap up the monologue brought to you by Golden Entertainment. They own the Strat. You've been to the top of the world to have one of the best interviews of your life. You've been on the rides up top. You've been down to their PT's wings down low. Have you been to everything that they have here? The William Hill Sportsbook. PT's also, they fuel the monologue. 65 taverns now in the Valley and 5 to 7, midnight to 2, the best happy hour in town. Look, if you want to sit here and go, Gardner Minshew is going to be the quarterback of the Raiders, I'm going to ask for a little bit more respect for Aiden O'Connell. That's going to be my only pushback here. The bloggers and everybody else need to understand the relationship that Antonio Pierce has with Aiden O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell's a starting quarterback today. Now, it's going to be an open competition, sure. Can Aiden O'Connell do that job? Absolutely. But he walked off the field last year winning games. Became went from the interim to the head coach. He deserves the opportunity status heading into this time and what he did yesterday, showing up and speaking for a reason. If Gardner Minshew beats him out, it'll be a big topic. And imagine that if Antonio Pierce has to go to the podium and say, our starting quarterback is, and we pause and who is it? I'm going to go with Gardner Minshew. We don't know that. We don't know if he's going to get a great quarterback early in the draft. But quarterback is not an embarrassment for this team. We're not embarrassed at the quarterback position. There are some other teams out there that have to get a quarterback. We are not a franchise that has to get one, but it'd be really cool if we got Jaden Daniels. It'd be epic if we got Jaden Daniels because of his bravado, his relationship with Coach Pierce, and being a Heisman Trophy winner and an electric player. Caleb Williams is off the board. If I thought Caleb was available, I'd be going harder for Caleb than I would be for Jaden Daniels, but I know he's not available. I feel like there could be a trade dance partner there, but the commanders are going to demand a lot. All right, when we come back, we'll hear from you more. Jordan Schultz will join us. We'll dive into what this draft looks like. Peter Schrager, I want to give him credit, as he was the topic of the monologue, as he put out his mock draft. Bucky Brooks on Thursday. Yeah, whatever you want, we got it for you, man. Every day you're listening, you know I'm heavy on the draft. I get a chance to anchor it again. It's an honor for me to do that for the Raiders on radio as we open up the show live on YouTube, JT the Brick YT, Raider Nation Radio. All right, that was fun. How long was that? 32 minutes. Who's your other favorite radio host that talks for freaking 32 minutes straight? Oh, that was good. That was good. Who do you like tonight? You like the Warriors or the Kings? As I tweeted out earlier today, if the Kings can't win that game, just take the beam out. None of this bullshit. Light the beam. They're they're toast if they can't win that game. Toast. Lakers, Pelicans. I think the Lakers will win. I think. Well, Zion puts up 40, and it's hard to put up 40 against Anthony Davis when he's Middle of the paint, it's hard to do that. Thank you. Uh, are, you um, are you tossing to him? No, I'm going to probably wait on that at okay. some point. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You can come out with that, Bernie Williams. Yes. What else we got here? What about Los Angeles Raider Nation Drinking Club? Thor's there. JT, yee. Thor showing up. I love it. Fix the O line. Raider Ryan, good to see you. Need a badass right tackle, Kyle says, and a shutdown corner. Well, you're not going to get a shutdown corner if you don't take a shutdown corner at 13. I'm all for taking the right tackle before the corner. La Casa, Mike, I'm with you. We can't trade up to get Daniels and stay put and go right tackle or starting corner. Iceman, great to see the new channel rolling. Dude, we were in here an hour before the show trying to put in this new software for the calls, for the audio, for all this. We're almost there. 
Probably be a couple more days. Raider Ryan likes Fuaga. He plays with that chip on his shoulder like a Raider. True, he does. Uh, Mike Daniels, great call. Thank you, Chris in West Oakland. Carl, I like the new backdrop. Yeah, you can thank Hugh Myers and the, the staff for doing that. Wow. Yeah, I went to that Billy Joel concert, Danny, and I sat out in the rain for an hour. Yeah. I didn't pick, but I might be getting a little bit run down. You sit in the rain. Where was that? In San Diego, Petco Park. Oh, okay. You sit in a driving rainstorm for an hour when it's 64 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Starting to kick my ass a little bit. Oh, any other breaking news today? Anybody else want to hit on something a little bit different? The Bucks preparing to be without Giannis. Uh, just a heads up, the uh, JM Puerto Rico guy, his, uh, his end of the call might be a little noisy. Okay. Sounds like he's got noise in the background. Hey, I'm going to give you, uh, if you can roll on this uh, resort. Yep. Right. That ball is high. It is far. It is good. Bernie goes boom. He goes a home run the short way in the right field seats. Bird, baby, bird. Welcome back to the JT The Root Show. Brought to you by Happy Hour is now 5 to 7 p.m. And midnight is our show. That was John Sterling on Yankees Radio. He announced his retirement. Due to health reasons, a big backdrop of my youth. JT, back with you. I want to remind everybody, Resorts World, what a theater. What a great place to go see live acts. And now, July 12th and 14th, Kevin Hart, Acting My Age Tour 2024. You can buy tickets. Go to Resorts World. Their pre-sale is on April 17th, 10 a.m. And on the 18th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific, use the code rw 2024 to buy tickets. Also, stay at Resorts World. Dine, have cocktails. If you've ever been to a show there, from Carrie Underwood to David Blaine, all the shows that I've seen there in the past have been outstanding. And now you get a chance to see Kevin Hart, who's got one of the greatest comedy concert tours of all time. Resorts World, proud partner of our show. So that was John Sterling, who's retiring as the Yankee broadcaster. Uh, I knew John for years. I was able to get him on the radio because I was such a diehard Yankee fan. So in 2006, he came to Oakland, and I got a credential, went up to the press box early, about an hour before the game, and uh, knocked on the door, went into the press box, knew the engineer who was working the road games, and John Sterling was there. And that's the first time we really met. He said, sit down with me, and we talked for about 10 minutes. He was eating a bowl of vanilla ice cream. We started talking about the Yankees and broadcasting, and he paid me a really nice compliment. He liked me for the interviews that we had, wished me well. It was just nice, you know, to walk back out there and as a fan and to meet John Sterling, who called so many iconic Yankee games before that Atlanta Brave games, Atlanta Hawk games. He'll go into Monument Park for the Yankees. And look, everybody has their favorite broadcaster, right? Everybody has the guy they grew up with. That's the guy for me. But before that, I listened on TV to Phil Rizzuto and Frank Messer and Bill White. And I know you have there's fans from all over the country and you all have your favorite guy. When your favorite guy retires, stuff. It's a big part of your youth. So congratulations to John Sterling 
on an unbelievable career with the Yankees, calling all those playoff games, dynasty games, all the big home runs, and doing it well into his 80s. You know, people always say, how long you want to do your job? I don't want to do anything, any work into my 80s. But if you're broadcasting baseball games, it's kind of not work. You're at the ballpark, you're getting fresh air, and you're talking into a mic. Look at how long Vince Scully lived. John Sterling doing this. These guys who do this into their 80s, it's really fascinating. We're waiting on our conversation coming up with Jordan Schultz momentarily. Let me get out to Isaac. Is Isaac there? Isaac, thanks for holding. You're up next. What's happening? You're on the flagship. Um, really excited about this upcoming year, the defense that the Raider Nation is building. It's been um, years coming. I remember going to the games in Oakland. Um, I don't know if this crowd ever in Vegas is going to be the same. It's kind of more glam and glitz, but everybody's talking quarterbacks, and I think the Raider Nation defense will bring the, the old-school fans back in here. But uh, my question for you, uh, JT, is uh, a lot of these quarterbacks, everybody gets hyped up, the media, everybody starts talking about quarterbacks, and, and uh, we, you, you get to Mitchell Trubisky's and all these guys that just don't pack, pan out, Mac Jones. If we move mountains and we trade up and we, we get our quarterback, say we get Jaden Daniels, everybody wants everything super fast, Instagram, TikTok. Nobody has patience anymore. Do we sit that guy? Because this offensive line, the right side, I know I, I know we don't know who's going to be there. Uh, now with Getsky there, he runs his own scheme. Uh, maybe Thayer Munford's not, not best suited for right tackle. Maybe right guard might be better instead of having him chase outside linebackers and, and uh, these quick defensive ends. Uh, all of Max Crosby, uh, do you think that uh, we would have the patience to sit a Jaden Daniels if we had him and let our other guys go out there while we can figure out what's going to go on the offensive line? Again, congrats on the show. And, uh, look forward to the next one. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, man. Appreciate the call. It's a good phone call. A couple of important points you talked about. First off, whoever gets drafted at quarterback, no chance in hell you want to play them at all. Early, no chance. You got Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell who proved themselves, clearly proved themselves. So there's no chance you'd want to even take a high quarterback via a blockbuster trade and start him. They didn't do that with Mahomes in Kansas City behind Alex Smith. You don't do it. You just don't do it. And you made another good point. Then you got to solidify the offensive line. And you're losing draft picks in the future to try to build your offensive line. You're using first-round picks. So I don't think that becomes a priority to start Jaden Daniels or Drake May if J.J. McCarthy turns out. What happens if the Raiders got a smoke screen going now and they really want J.J. McCarthy? We don't know. And they only have to trade up to, say, four to Arizona and a little bit less. I don't know what they're going to do. But even if they got J.J. McCarthy, and especially Michael Penix Jr., that seems to be the popular choice by popular people today, I don't think you have to go do that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to put a young man in harm's way in the NFL when you don't have the team and the offensive line completely set? Very good question. And the other thing he said, which was really important, which I liked, could, this is a great topic. I want to give him full credit for that. Let's give Isaac a lot of credit for this question. As a season ticket holder, oh, I want to save this topic. It's so good, and I had nothing to do with it. As a season ticket holder, which I am, would you rather walk into the building knowing you have a badass defense I mean, a Ravens-type defense. I'm talking, this is not going to be Ray Lewis's Ravens defense. This is not going to be the 85 Bears. Sorry, Raider Nation. It could be good. We're not going there, but you get my point. If you came through the parking lot, you came through the tailgate knowing that, hey, you're not going to score 35 points, but your defense is going to be iconic with Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby, and it's going to get better and better, would you end up taking that as your mindset going into the game? I would. I grew up with that with Lawrence Taylor and the Giants. I grew up with that type of vibe. Lawrence Taylor was a lot better than Phil Sims, But the Giants won games because Lawrence Taylor controlled the game. And Phil Sims did a nice job as the quarterback and managed the games and won. Same example you could say for Mike Sim Singletary and the Bears defense, 85, Richard Dent, Mongo McMichael, all the, Otis, all the great players that they had. You know, Jim McMahon was a good player. He wasn't a Hall of Famer. Trent Dilfer, as the caller said earlier today, with the Baltimore Ravens and what he was able to do down the road. Brad Johnson, who beat the Raiders in a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay and their elite defense. It's kind of interesting. Raiders' defense has not been impressive for a long time. 
it's good to hear that call because people are excited now about, about the potential of a defense to show up big and do some great things. Jay is in Puerto Rico. International note, part of our great, part of our great country. Go ahead, Jay. Thank you for getting my call. I appreciate it. I just want to talk about the last statement about T Rose. You have totally knocked it out of the park. I, why they keep not giving the man a chance to perform and get his jacket all ready? You follow me? That's one. And the best broadcaster for me at this time is you, okay? And I say that from the bottom of my heart. As the last segment that you were talking about, uh, Lawrence or what his name was, he had a good point. And what I mean by that is the quarterback position. It might look ugly for us to get anybody that we want because our situation, do we take that chance to move up and lose four or five years, and he becomes a quarterback, it's good. But if he doesn't, he ends up, a, you know, it's not worth it. We have a defense right now. Okay. Well, Jay, I got to jump in for Jay. I got to jump in from Puerto Rico. Thanks for the call, breaking up a little bit, but thank you for that. Yeah, I, I think a, a top five defense with Christian Wilkins, a top five defense is that's hard. Top five defense is hard. There's some good defenses in this league. I think the Raiders could have an opportunity to be a top ten defense because they would trend in that way at the end of the year and then break into the top seven in that mountain. If they get to the top five, it's an unbelievable year. I think I saw today a season win total of six and a half for the Raiders, another one. I'm like, are you kidding me? Bet that over all day long and thank me again. I told you last year and I got it right. I'll tell you again, but the defense, if the Raiders are able to get anything out of Tyree Wilson, I repeat, if the Raiders could figure out Tyree Wilson, the former number seven pick overall from last year, and figure out a plan to keep him on the field, and he explodes onto the NFL scene along with Malcolm Goons, Mad Max Crosby, and Christian Wilkins, then the Raiders could be scary. Because Koontz, these guys are all young. They're all young guys, and they don't want to come off the field. Tyree Wilson will be coming off the field. There isn't a scenario right now early in his career where he's going to stay on the field with the guys I just mentioned. But if he can stay on the field for more than I think, then the Raider defense could be outstanding and that's what we're looking forward to. One more quick one. Orlando is in Connecticut listening on the Raiders mobile app. What's happening, Orlando? What's up, my brother? Big time fan, 57 years old. I'm doing a little edging here in Connecticut, 65 degrees for once. Nice. I'm with you with the whole quarterback thing. We have to get a quarterback. But, JT, let me float this to you, brother. Why can't we get him next year? Why can't we just beef up the offensive line, grab a couple additional defensive players this year, get stuff ready, see what Mitchell and, and AOC can do, and if it doesn't work out, hey, let's vote those three number ones next year. What for who? I mean, they don't. We don't have. Year? They don't have a player that's going to be there for those three number one picks next year at the level of Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. That seems to be true. So, you know, I, I agree with what you're saying, but. The, the quarterback class next year is much – it's it's a big drop-off compared to this year. I, I get that. I see that happening. I, I see what the recruits are coming in. Um, I just feel like it should be a make-or-break year for the quarterback position for us. And, hey, and what if we throw some picks at an, a, a proven NFL starter next year? Yeah, I agree with you on that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck with the edging the rest of the way. I was a landscaper. Very proficient at edging with a weed whacker. With a weed whacker, I was pretty good at edging. Now I live out west where you don't have to cut your own lawn because it's a value, the value to have someone else come in and do that. But man, I wish my kids knew what it was like when my dad would say when I was a kid, get outside and cut the lawn. Didn't have a big lawn. We had a nice house, nice middle class house growing up, man. But dad wanted it a certain way. Dad, and dad cut it most of the time. The hell with me. Starting 16 years old, I had a lawn company and cut lawns. 
And uh, I will never forget cutting lawns in pitch black because we were behind after two days of rain. And we get a 20 minute break for lunch. We'd get a hero, you know, like a ham and Swiss, a half a gallon of iced tea, guzzle it, and right back with the lawnmowers, man. Cutting grass in the summer in Long Island, New York, man. No one's ever accused me of not working, man. At an early age, I knew you could make money in Long Island cutting grass. And it was hard work. It was hard work when you had a hundred of them. It took time to do it. But I'll tell you, those years were some of the great memories. Because the second I would come home, real quick, Danny, I know we're running late. The second I came home, I would race up to the shower. Mom would have a little bit of dinner. And my buddies would be pulling up with their cars to go out, to go out. And I'd have some money in my pocket. Then I'd take that money. At the end of the summer, I would take that money back to college. And it would be gone in the first week. The first weekend, that whole summer of work, uh, that money would magically disappear in the bars at Geneseo State University. It would go very quick back in the day where, you know, you got quarter beers. Not to date myself, quarter beers. Went through a lot of quarters back in college. All right, when we come back, we're hunting down a couple of guests. We'll tell you about it. I'll keep the live stream going to the top of the hour. Fun show today. The calls are outstanding. Isn't it nice, Danny, when I don't have to blank and moan about energy? Calls, I don't care if anybody calls. I just want the calls to be great. You're seeing that today on the longest tenured show in Raiders history on the radio. Thrilled to be here. Brought to you by the 872 Laborers, led by Tommy White, building this city on time and on budget. What's going on with VGK? Are they going to have to tank some games here? And what's, what's the playoff thing look like? Uh, well, I mean, tonight, uh, they got tonight and Thursday, but they're almost locked into Edmonton in the first round. Oh. Yeah, if we get Edmonton in the first round, that's tough, huh? Uh, yeah, with, uh, that route looks like Edmonton, Vancouver. Versus All right, everybody. Excited. Good live stream today. Really feel good about what we're doing today. Thanks a lot for everybody being in here. Remember, click subscribe and share. I think we should have easily went over 3,000 subscribers here in a little over seven weeks which isn't bad with a little inconsistency here. I am probably going to do a live stream tonight from home. We'll get back to doing that on Tuesdays. So we'll do that. Please hit like here if you're in that. Like and subscribe. We'd appreciate that. Show up like you got a pair. Sound off like you got a pair. Giuseppe. Willie, go Raiders, go. David, good times, I agree. Yeah, I would bet the total of the Raiders six and a half right now if you can get it. That means they got to win seven games. Six scary thing is Vegas is normally right with those predictions, so Vegas doesn't like what they see. I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm, more than what I saw last year, and last year I thought they played pretty well. I'm from Massapequa, Long Island, home of Jerry Seinfeld, the Stray Cats, the Baldwin Brothers, Joey Buttafuoco, Jessica Hahn. My family grew up in West Sable. Yeah, Sable. Got some friends out in Sable. That's what brought them out. Where'd they go after that? Uh, most of them went down to Virginia, which is where I'm from. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're all spread out. All right. Um, Nashville, Florida. Okay, a little upstate off. New York. Also, I need, so you got that Kevin Hart live read? Yep. I'm going to give you one more right behind it here. That's more important. When we come back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
All right, everybody, I'm going to check in here for about another five minutes. Appreciate you being here. Look for me tonight, probably 6, 6 p.m. Pacific, and that'll be 9 p.m. Eastern. Or maybe I'm going to wait after that playing game. What the hell? What time are these games on tonight? First one's at 4.30, second one's at 7. Oh, 7. Yeah, it's 7 o'clock is the uh, Kings and Warriors. Mm. Kings Warriors at 7 o'clock, 10 Eastern. 10 Eastern for Warriors. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm coming back with the Aces first. Day. We are back in third. Yeah, forget it. Forget it. Forget about that live read. I got a different one. I don't need it. Hope everybody who supports the Aces is excited for the draft and the draft selections. Nice job. Mark Davis is going for a three-peat. And I love when Mark is talking at all these events and he introduces himself to the crowd as the owner of the Raiders. But before that, the two-time reigning champs of the WNBA, the Las Vegas Aces. Wrapping up the first hour, Jordan Schultz next hour. Hopefully old and Polonese as we get you ready for the play-in game. Let me get the Big Al in San Francisco. Danny, if we could do that. Big Al's always got a call. Warriors playing at 7 o'clock tonight, Big Al. That's 10 Eastern. Biggest game, an elimination game. How are you? I'm actually driving up there right now and enjoying listening to your show. So Thank you. I, I like to get up there early. Traffic, as you lived out here, you know how bad traffic can be. We take no chances. So, um, it's look, the Warriors are a better team than the Kings. The Kings are banged up. They didn't get any better last offseason. They rolled back out the same team, and now they're short two shooting guards. Um, the Warriors... You know, their record, 46-36, um, they're in 10th place. It, everybody shakes their heads. But this is a good basketball team. And uh, it's it's a time of year where they're going to get ready and they're going to they're turn it on tonight. And as long as they don't do anything stupid, and unfortunately the Warriors have a habit of playing stupid basketball and bad turnovers and ill-advised uh, decision-making and so forth, if they just play the game the right way, they should get by this game. Nothing against the Kings, but if you don't get better and you get two key injuries and you don't you can't replace them, uh, you got a problem. Now it's one game, so you know anything can happen in one game. But I expect the Warriors to come through in this game. It's the next game, whether they have to go to uh, New Orleans or whether they have to go play the Lakers. Both teams with crazy length. That's where the problem comes in. Thanks, Big Al. Drive safe. Appreciate you checking in. Big Al understands we're a sports talk radio show when there's not a lot of Raider news. There's hype for the Raiders with the draft, but appreciate him calling in on that game tonight. The Kings are at home. and the, When you're playing at home in an elimination like game like this at the Golden 1 Center, if Sacramento doesn't win this game, I don't care about their injuries, what's happening. It's devastating to that organization. Their whole history is about getting beat by the Warriors and the Lakers. Give me a break. Sacramento's in. This is a must-win game. But it's this garbage play in playoff game. If Sacramento loses, just take the beam out of that arena and forget about lighting the beam because it won't mean anything. Hour number two coming up next. Thanks to the DeCasta Verde Law Group. If you get into an accident, 702 222 9999. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Please hit subscribe on the way out and like if you can. And look for me tonight on a live stream. We'll get that going. Maybe as the Laker game's going on, excuse me, the Kings game's going on with the Warriors. Appreciate everybody being there today. Thanks for uh, watching the live stream.